In this video, we'll take a look at how to track forms that do not redirect you to a thank you page. They just simply display the success message and that's it. Most likely this form is built with a technology called Ajax. And in this video, we'll take a look at how to track Ajax forms with Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics much faster. If you're dealing with a form that just displays the success message after it was submitted without refreshing, redirecting or whatever, most likely that form is built with an Ajax technology. By default, Google Tag Manager cannot identify such form submissions, but with several tweaks that I will show you in this video, that will become possible. By the way, if this method does not work for your form, check the first link in the description of this video, where you will find a very extensive guide on how to track forms with Google Tag Manager. All right, so let's not waste your time and let's learn how to track Ajax forms with Google Tag Manager. Right now I am on a demo website with some sample Ajax form. I've also injected my Google Tag Manager container. Right now it is empty. So you can see only three events, which are default, container loaded, DOM ready, and window loaded. Also in my container, I have created a form submission trigger just to check whether it works with my form right here. So every time I start working with a form and you want to track that with Google Tag Manager, first you need to successfully submit that form in order to see what happens and what kind of tracking method should you choose. Click Submit. And as you can see, the success message has appeared. Nothing appeared in the preview mode. So this means that our form submission trigger is not working. And in this case, the URL of the page hasn't changed. So this means that thank you page form tracking method also does not work. Now, usually when a form shows a success message without refreshing the page, most likely that form is built with an Ajax technology and a fairly easy and non-technical way to check whether that form is using Ajax is to add an Ajax listener to your Google Tag Manager container. Below the video, you will find a link to my blog post about Ajax form tracking with Google Tag Manager. And once you click it, scroll down until you see this code. Click on this icon, which is copy, and then hit Control C or Command C, depending on what kind of laptop are you using. Copy the code, and then go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, Tag Configuration, then choose Custom HTML, paste that code, and set this trigger to fire on all pages. Then let's name the tag. I usually name it CHTML, which stands for custom HTML. And then what does that tag do? So in this case, it is an Ajax listener. Click Save, then refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page with the form and let's submit it once again. Submit the form. And what we see right now is Ajax complete. So this means that there was an Ajax request. And if we click it and go to the data layer, we will see a lot of information about this form submission. The majority of these parameters are very technical, but what we are interested in is this response part. So if you see some response information and that information is related to a successful form submission, then we could try using this form tracking method in our setup. Now, if you're thinking that it's okay just to use this event as a triggering condition, this is not a good practice because maybe there are more elements on your website that are using Ajax complete. So in this case, we need to send the GA event, not on all Ajax complete events, but only on those events where the response data contains something that shows us that the form was successfully submitted. If we look at these parameters, in our case, the message key shows us that the form was successfully submitted. So in other words, we could instruct Google Tag Manager to send an event to Google Analytics when Ajax complete event occurs, but when the message contains this text. So first of all, we need to somehow access this data in the data layer. And we can do that by creating a data layer variable for this particular key, which is message. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then scroll down, user-defined variables, new, 
variable configuration, data layer variable, and then we need to enter the key that we want to access in the data layer. However, there is one catch. In this case, the data is not simple. I mean, it's not linear, it's not primitive. What we see is that there is one key, which is called attributes, and that attributes has a lot of keys right there. Then if we go one level deeper, you will see that there is response and the response contains this kind of information. Then we see that the data is another object and that object contains these parameters. So if we want to instruct Google Tag Manager to access message, we need to define the entire path from top to bottom. So in this case, we should enter attributes, then dot, because every level is separated with a dot if we want to access an object. So dot response, dot data, dot message. Like this, every level we have separated with a dot because right now we are working with a thing called object. In your case, the response of the form might look different, like entirely different. For example, in your case, there might be just response and that response might contain some text or some message about the form submission. In other cases, there might not be any message at all. Maybe there will be some other parameter like success message or just success error or whatever. But in this case, we had to define the entire path from top level, which is attributes, then response, data, and message. And let's name the variable. In this field, you can enter whatever you want, but it's super important that you enter everything properly and correctly in this field. Save the variable. Then let's create a custom event trigger because we want to send an event to Google Analytics when this Ajax complete event happens in the data layer. And we can instruct Google Tag Manager to treat this as a trigger if we create a custom event trigger. So let's go to triggers, then new trigger configuration, custom event, and then enter Ajax complete case sensitive. Then name the trigger, click save. And the final step is to send an event to Google Analytics. So when this form is submitted and the Ajax complete event occurs in the data layer with this information, then we should send an event to Google Analytics. Actually, I just realized that I forgot one more thing. So we need to make our Ajax complete trigger more precise because we are interested not in all Ajax complete events, but only in those where message contains this text. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, open our trigger. As we are interested in some custom events and we are looking for those events where our data layer variable contains that text. Once again, I want to emphasize that in your case, the response might look totally different. So you will need to adapt this method to your situation. Save it. And now let's go and create our Google Analytics tag. Actually, this is a brand new container, so I have no GA tags. That's why I need to start everything from beginning. Since we are focusing on form submissions, I will skip the step where I need to track page views as well. So let's go to tags, click new, tag configuration, universal analytics, then switch to event and enter at least event category and event action. So in this case, I usually enter form submission as event category. And in the action field, it might be contact form because what we are dealing here with is the contact form. Then let's select the G settings variable. Right now I don't have any, therefore I will need to create a new one. So I will click it right here and then new variable. And now I need to enter the tracking ID of my Google Analytics property. So I need to go to GA, then go to admin, then tracking info, tracking code, copy this ID, paste it right here, name the variable. And then in the triggering section, let's choose the custom event trigger that we have just created. Finally, let's name the tag. Save it. And let's test everything. So refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page, and let's submit the form once again. Click Submit. Our Ajax complete event is now in the data layer. Click it. We will see that our tag has fired. 
you can click it and you can see what kind of information was sent. So we see the category, we see the action, and then let's go to GA real time reports and see whether our data was actually properly sent and was actually properly received by Google Analytics. So let's go to GA real time events because we are sending an event and then you will see that our event is sent right here. If you cannot see your event right here, below the video, I will post a link to one of my blog posts that will help you troubleshoot why your real-time reports are not working. Awesome. Now we know how to track Ajax forms with Google Tag Manager. All you need to do is to create a custom HTML tag that listens to Ajax form submissions. You need to create a custom event trigger, data layer variables, and then fire a tag when the Ajax form is successfully submitted. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing. By the way, this video is the very first tutorial on this channel, and I would really like to hear your feedback. Did you like it? If yes, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you liked. And if you did not like it, let me know in the comments what can I improve and how can I do that. So that's it for this time, and I will see you in the next video.